Hello, I'm Bill Jones and welcome to Vipe TV, a show that highlights local athletes, their schools and their communities. On today's show, what a great weekend it was at Cowboys Stadium last week. We have a complete wrap up of all the state championship games. We go up close and personal with perhaps the top dual threat quarterback in the state of Texas, J.W. Walsh of Geyer High School in Denton. And we have the very latest recruiting news spotlighting the stars of state championship weekend with our recruiting expert, David McNabb. And welcome to a Christmas Day edition of Vibe TV. We appreciate you sharing a part of your holiday morning with us. We trust you are up bright and early to unwrap Christmas presents this morning because that's the way we know it is in the Polzer home. Tim Polzer, editor in chief for Vibe Magazine, joins us as usual right off the top on this Christmas morning. Is that pretty much the way it is? They're up bright and early. What pretty age? Much. Four, two, and a newborn in that's your house, right. right? The newborn is not up yet, but the, the four <laughs> and the two-year-old. Uh, they're up early. The uh, newborn hasn't uh, quite caught on, hasn't grasped the concept No, but yet, there are right? three boys, so he'll catch on pretty fast. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, get back uh, to what happened last weekend. What a great state championship weekend it was. And what better place to start than with the marquee game on Saturday night. It was the Euless Trinity Trojans looking for their fourth state championship in six years, 15-0 on the year, taking on equally unbeaten Fairland, the Oilers from the Houston area making their first trip to state and what a start to this for Trinity check out Tevin Williams hurdling the defender and going 55 yards for the touchdown as the Trojans were well on their way it appeared leading 7-0 but Pearland's got a pretty fine running back themselves Dustin Garrison gets in from six yards out it was a 7-7 game in the second quarter after a Trinity field goal and a Pearland touchdown Check out this, the trick play early third quarter. Samuel Yukawachu on the receiving end of the pass from Trey Anderson as the offensive lineman did not get set in a down position. It fooled Trinity. They do wake up on the ensuing drive. Terrence Tucson from two yards out. It was a 21-17 deficit that the Trojans faced at that point. But then Garrison, as Trinity once again has problems containing the opposing offense. Garrison from two yards out made an 11 point lead for the Oilers at 28-17. And then Brandon Carter would uh, find the end zone just across the goal line there to make it a 28-24 game. And this game comes down to the final drive for Trinity. Final play in the closing seconds right here. And it was Brandon Carter split out wide left with the leap. Dustin Garrison, the running back for Paraland defending on the play. In 28-24, the final, the Trinity Trojans fall just short of their fourth state championship in six years. I'm very proud of them. I'm proud of the way that they're not used to losing. But we saw a nice uh, class reaction and uh, two, two teams going at each other undefeated. By golly, I thought we was going to pull it out. You know, it's been like that this year and uh, just came up a little short. It's a blessing to be on this team. The whole uh, coaching staff, they're amazing to uh, be, be around. And once I have kids, I, I'm going to bring them to Trinity. So disappointing uh, for Trinity. They come so close to winning yet another uh, state championship. Tim, y'all were out there all day long on uh, Saturday. And what a way to end uh, championship Saturday. That was that last play to Brandon Carter. They came very close to succeeding. And it was weird to, uh, to be in the press box because you could kind of sense that uh, people felt like Trinity was going to pull it out, especially people that had seen them all year. They just came very close to doing it. These, these were like two heavyweights duking mm -hmm. it out, and it was kind of like this for uh, Trinity uh, throughout the playoffs this year. Brandon Carter with his uh, fourth down plays that he made throughout the playoffs was really something to see. It was. I, I thought that Tevin Williams' TD run, I thought it really set the, the tone for Trinity and, and it really was going to set Pearland back, but you got to give the Oilers credit. They bounced back. There he goes. There he wow. is, man. Uh, it's, and that's the typical Trinity running back play, whether it's Brandon Carter, Tevin Williams, Terrence Toussaint, they're physical, but they also are very athletic leap over you, and I really thought that Trinity was going to have their way early on. Well, uh, of course, the game right before that, the Denton Geyer Wildcats were taking on the Cibolo Steel Knights in the Class 5A Division II championship game, a matchup of two 13 and two teams coming in. Geyer playing in its first ever state championship game after coming oh so close in the last couple of years. Malcolm Brown, the future Texas Longhorn, receives the pass from Tommy Armstrong, and Steele was on the board first at 7-0. Of course, Denton Geyer has J.W. Walsh, their fine pass 
passing and running quarterback. He puts the Wildcats on the board early with a 16-yard run. He's fired up. It was a 7-7 game. Geyer falls behind 14-7, and it's the Oklahoma State combination, the future Cowboys, Josh Stewart, from J.W. Walsh, and it was a 14-14 game late in the second quarter after a steal field goal made it 17-14. Geyer would take the lead in the fourth quarter. Trayvon Walton from 11 yards out, 21-17 in favor of the Wildcats, but here comes Steele back, and that was that man, Malcolm Brown, from two yards out to give Steele the lead at 24-21. Back and forth we go, and then the final play here on a second down play, J.W. Walsh throws the interception. And uh, that's the way it ended for the Wildcats of Geyer High School. 24-21 final. Denton Geyer's Wildcats come oh so close in their first ever trip to state. with JW it's special you know and it hurts right now because you know he made a critical mistake at the end uh, but you know we've, we've been living on dying on his legs and arms since we started and uh, we've won a lot of football games with him at quarterback I, I can't be more proud of, uh, of JW Walsh as a dad and as a coach you know we're not going to quit you know and we came up short to a great team but quitting's not in our MO they work too hard and uh, they're made they're made we didn't win today but they're made of champions inside of them of course, John Walsh, the head coach, his son, J.W., the quarterback of Guy, and it really shows you a lot about the leadership of J.W. Walsh as he addressed the team. He interrupted his dad as he was talking to the team after that most disappointing loss, and he put it all on himself. That really says a lot about him. He sure did, and that story's going to follow him in the college ranks, too. He's, you know, he's been the, the son of a coach. He's been through a lot of pressure being the son of a coach. A lot of people uh, think he gets some preferential treatment, but when you perform like that before the game, off the field and off the field, it, it's, there's no doubters. He's He's a, going to be a real good player up there at Oklahoma State. And, of course, Geyer taking on uh, the one of the top teams from the San Antonio area in this game. you got to – hats off to Geyer, and not only for this season, but the last several seasons and what they've done. Two upstart programs, two schools that weren't in existence as little as six or seven years ago. That's right. And, and the two, two teams that came up from 4A and, and ended up in the 5A finals. Uh, uh, I thought that Geyer's defense played really well. They really limited Malcolm Brown to – it seems kind of funny to say only 112 yards, but, but they really – was pretty quiet all day. All right, Tim, we got much more coming up here on Vipe TV. We take a look at the Class 4A state championship games and the unbelievable performance turned in by Landry Award winner Jonathan Gray of the Alito Bearcats. Happened to be bending over to reach for a ball, and the next thing I knew, I was uh, laying on the ground in agony with my uh, hip dislocated. It was incredible for, for them to actually take my hip apart, put the, the steel cap on, put it back together, and then within days and weeks, I'm back on my feet. Last November, I rode a 109-mile bike race in Tucson, Arizona, and not one time did I ever think about my hip. My legs got a little tired. Baylor Healthcare System. Orthopedic services applied to you. Welcome back to Vibe TV. Time to take a look at state championship weekend for the Class 4A divisions at Cowboys Stadium last Friday night and Saturday afternoon. Let's start with the number one ranked Class 4A team in the state, the defending 4A Division II state champion, Alito Bearcats, as they were involved in quite a game against Lamarck on Friday night last weekend. Matthew Bishop going up top to Michael Mann, breaks a couple of tackles, and he is on his way. 52 yards for the touchdown as Alito took the early 7-0 lead. Of course, Alito is led by this man. It's number 32, Jonathan Gray, the junior running back. 40 yards for the touchdown, a 14-0 lead. This is a battle of running backs. Some jaw-dropping runs by this guy for Lamarck. Tim Wright, he goes 20 yards for the touchdown here. The lead cut in half at 14-7. And this is all still in the first quarter. There goes Jonathan Gray again, 66 yards this time. Back to a 14-point lead for the Bearcats at 21-7. After a right running touchdown, and check this out, Emmanuel Williams to right, 36 yards, and runs over a man at the 20-yard line and goes the final 20 untouched. 
A 21-20 game, Alito led. Gray scores a touchdown late in the half, and then it's Manny Williams to Jamal Owens. 59 yards were tied at 27 late in the quarter. And then Jonathan Gray to close out the second quarter. 42 yards, Alito led at halftime, 34-27. And then Tim Buchanan's team just wears them out in the second half. Early third quarter, Gray for nine yards and a score, a 14-point lead at 41-27. After an exchange of touchdowns, Gray again, 12 yards. It's up to a 21-point lead in the fourth, his seventh touchdown of the game, a record 58th, and just for good measure, how about another one from 54 yards out? 320 yards rushing, eight touchdowns, 59 on the season, a state record, what an incredible performance for Jonathan Gray, who will now have a chance along with his returning teammates to go for a three-peat next season. I mean, all week we just had a great practice, and I felt like our defense was going to do something, and I was hoping to play my best and, you know, make a few plays, and I think that's, you know, just how our defense is. Anyone's capable of making plays at any time. You know, we work hard and very disciplined. You know, I was a little worried that, a little worried that we weren't going to be able to slow them down there for a little while, but Coach Wood, Coach C, the defensive guys went in at halftime, made some great adjustments, and, and able to slow them down and create some turnovers. 34-27 at the half, 69-34 to 34 the final score. What a game. It was amazing just watching that, uh, just the points rolling up. I thought it was going to be right and gray all night. It turned out to be. But Gray came into the game. A lot of talk about him being injured and slowed, but he sort of did not show it at all. Yeah, he had battled a knee injury the last uh, couple of weeks, but eight touchdowns, 320 yards rushing. And again, it is a single season state record with uh, 59 touchdowns on the season. That's right, you know, Ken Hall's a legend from Sugar Land. The Sugar Land Express, Exactly, yeah, that's a long standing record, and especially in these days of offensive football. And uh, to have his name up there is just another accolade for Jonathan Gray. And of course, not only Jonathan Gray, but also Matthew Bishop, the quarterback, and some others returning next year. A chance for Alito to go for a three-peat next year. All right, the other 4A game played at noon on Saturday at Cowboy Stadium. Denton Ryan, another local team, taking on four-time state champion Lake Travis. A Lake Travis team, the Cavaliers, featuring Texas Tech recruit Michael Brewer at quarterback. And early on, there's Michael Brewer. Rather athletic move right there as he sails into the end zone with the greatest of ease. Great defense for Lake Travis. In fact, Denton Ryan didn't have a first down until this fourth and inches play in the third quarter. Kalen Alexander not only got the first down, he got the touchdown, and that's the only real offensive highlight for the Ryan Raiders on this day, as again, it was Lake Travis defense that came through in a very big way in a 27-7 win. Lake Travis Cavaliers walk away with their fourth straight Class 4A state championship. We didn't play very well tonight, but I think it had a lot to do with uh, Lake Travis. You know, they're champions, four-time champions for a reason. You know, they played a great game tonight, and, uh, you know, they took the fight to us. But uh, I'm more proud of these kids. We didn't quit. You know, I love these kids. I was, I'm very proud of them. They played hard the whole game. And, you know, at halftime, a lot of teams go in there and quit. But we came out and scored and uh, got the onside kick and moved the ball down a little bit. And it says a lot about them. Played hard. And, and uh, you know, I love them to death, but it just, just wasn't our day. Ryan, a, a perfect season ends with a loss in the state championship game to Lake Travis. They had quite a year at Ryan. They, they were a very offensive team last year. They almost reinvented themselves this year with a defense that was giving up, uh, I believe, less than 12 points a game going in here. But they ran into a Lake Travis program that uh, have won four straight titles for a reason. They're good. And uh, their defense really stood up against Ryan. Ryan's inability to stretch the field really kind of hurt them. And, and that Lake Travis offense just eventually wore Ryan down. And, of course, Lake Travis wins the Division I 4A state title. Alito, Division II, those two met in the regular season. However, Lake Travis didn't have their starting quarterback, Michael Brewer, when Jonathan Gray and Alito won. Tim Polzer, we appreciate it, and Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas to you, too. All right, we got much more Vipe TV to come. We take an up-close look at perhaps the top dual-threat quarterback in the state of Texas the past couple of years, J.W. Walsh of Denton Geyer, the future Oklahoma State Cowboy. Great protection by the offensive line. Is Welcome back to Vibe TV as I am now joined by J.W. Walsh, the quarterback at Geyer High School in Denton. It's been a terrific season for uh, for Geyer this year and a terrific career for you. Just uh, what, uh, if you could tell me what kind of the, the key has been the Wildcats' success this year. The uh, the key to success for us have been, has just been the way we've been able to come together as a team. The past two seasons we've had a lot of success, but 
this year there's something different, something special about our team that that, we, that you haven't felt in the locker room and, and haven't felt at practice. And, and I think that's what, what what's kept the season alive this year is, is being able to have this this deep connection that everybody has on on the field and and the way we the way we can just we connect and the way we we get along with each other. There's there's something special with the bond we have right now. You're here as a Landry Award finalist. What does it mean to you to be a Landry Award finalist number one? And how much do you know about Coach Landry? Uh, first of all, it, it 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 means so much to me to be be an an, an an award finalist for this, and and I think it just it just shows off the my team and the the, the way we've been able to have success this year, and and it, this is just this is this award goes through the team, and and because uh, without without them I wouldn't be able to to be in this position right now at all. Without the coaches or the even the guy community, it's it's been such a a, a blessing to be to be around the people I've been been around and been blessed with the coaches I've had and and uh, the the way they've I've been brought up with with the whole with the whole community and, and players and friends and family it's just it's a special thing that not many kids get to be a part of and I and I think I've I've been blessed with with something special like that and then second of all I don't know much about Tom Landry except that he uh, he was a Dallas Cowboy coach <laughs> and he's in the Ring of Honor so <laughs> now uh, what's it been like for you playing for your dad is it, has he coached you throughout from youth football all the way up or you know. It's it's a it's really special to have my dad be my coach, and you know you, when when you get to have the success that we've had as a team, it's really special all together. And then when you get to celebrate with celebrate it with your uh, with the clo with one of your closest closest people in your life, and, and one of the most influential people in your life, it's a it's it's it makes it even more special. And and I, and that's another thing I've been blessed with. And uh, and my dad, he's. He technically wasn't my Pee Wee coach, but you know he, he's he's a football coach, and if he was around, he he did his part. And uh, y'all were drawing up plays on the breakfast room table, probably. Yes, sir. <laughs> that, that's about how it was. And and uh, middle school, he he kind of laid off because I mean we had our middle school coaches, but then ever ever since then he's been he's been he's been the guy to coach me. So Oklahoma State's had a terrific year this year. Now you're graduating here this month, and you're going to start up in Stillwater uh, next month. Why did you decide on Oklahoma State? Oklahoma State was one of the first teams to start recruiting me, and they also the the way uh, they the coach Coach Gundy it runs his system and, and runs his football program. It, it reminds me a lot of the way we run it at Guyer, and and just the, the the family atmosphere you have there, and the, you can just you can see the team the team chemistry they have, and and uh, and then when they when they got uh, the core, new quarterback coach and offensive coordinator Coach Holgerson, that that was really the icing on the cake, and and what what really sold me to the school at the end was. Was hearing every all the success he's had in the past and, and the uh, and the success that he said he was going to have in the future and, and he really sold me and and I believed him and I'm glad I believed him because they they really have had an incredible season and offensively I think it's one of the best years Oklahoma State's ever had offensively and I think that just shows off of what Coach Overson has been able to do with with the team so I'm really excited about the future. Congratulations on a terrific high school career. Good luck at OSU. Thank you. All right, J.W. Walsh, quarterback at Geyer High School in Denton. And when we return, our resident recruiting expert, David McNabb, joins us when Vibe TV continues in just two minutes. It's time for a Christmas Day edition of our recruiting update. With that, we welcome in David McNabb, Vibe recruiting expert, author of the weekly McNabb Report. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas, David. Merry Christmas, Bill. And uh, let's talk about some quarterbacks that played on state championship weekend last weekend in Arlington. Of course, we've talked about J.W. Walsh. You heard him in the last segment. You know, Texas got a commitment from David Ash, quarterback from Belton, that did not go very far in the playoffs. We weren't expected to. Yeah. He had a good year. That's but. right. But uh, we've seen J.W. Walsh. We've seen Michael Brewer. Give us an idea of what exactly was going on there with Texas decision and well what? Texas uh, obviously you know they pick out the top one or two quarterbacks they want and early on in the recruiting process it's who they offer and who they don't the, they picked David Ash who's a big linebacker strong-armed guy and uh, so that's the quarterback Texas went, went with so that opened up J.W. Walsh for Oklahoma State to recruit and and uh, Michael Brewer, they talked to him. Of course, his dad, Robert Brewer, played at Texas. His grandfather, Charlie, played at Texas. And actually, he has a little brother, Charlie, who's soon to be uh, a quarterback at Lake Travis in about four years. <laughs> and uh, but, but which one of those quarterbacks emerges as, as the best will be talked about quite a bit. And if Texas made the right decision or if Oklahoma State got the better deal. Or, or, Texas, or, Tech. or Texas Tech. I know a lot of Red Raider fans who love seeing Michael Brewer and what he did uh, last weekend. He looks like 
like he's he's got a chance. I, I'd say uh, Michael may be ahead of all of them as far as his accuracy, quick reads, and getting rid of the ball. And, and of course, he showed that running ability early against Ryan. All right, a lot of people uh, also notice Brandon Carter, who played some quarterback, some receiver, some DB at Trinity. He's going to Oklahoma, recruited as a cornerback. He's recruited as a cornerback, and he's very uh, Deion Sanders. He, he he's extremely quick. You know, they used to call Deion Sanders referees called him the ghost because they'd say, be careful of the ghost because you could never hear him come. And everybody else, they heard this huffing and puffing in the uniform. And, and I've heard referees that have done the games go, Brandon Carter is the same one. He just sort of flies by you. You never hear him coming. For some reason, I'm thinking that they're not going to just keep him on the defensive side of the ball. They'll work I, him into the return game I think game he'll return punts. He'll do things like Dion, multi-purpose. All right. We uh, talk about the, the Texas Longhorns, what they did recruiting-wise at the quarterback position. Also a running back you saw last weekend from Cibolo Steele, and that would be Malcolm Brown. He's still solidly a Texas commitment, right? He's still solid a Texas commitment, and he's a great player. I mean, nobody can have the same kind of game that Jonathan Gray had. But, but he's a 2012 kid, but everybody's just as high on Malcolm Brown. He's a great uh, prospect for Texas. It, it's known as the Malcolm Brown class, you know, just every year. Last year was the Jackson Jeffcoat class, and he went to Texas. And whether it's the, you know, Matthew Stafford class or Ryan Mallett class, and this year it's the Malcolm Brown class. And you can tell he's a physical running back. He already has the size and the skills to play at the collegiate level. Oh, yeah, he's not a starter kid. He's ready to go. Yeah, he could start and get Game one next year for and Texas. And he just may be doing that for Texas. Yeah. David, we appreciate right. it as usual. We'll see you again next week here on Vibe TV. And we thank you for joining us on this Christmas morning. We'll be back next week at 1030 a.m. to bring you the best stories in North Texas high school sports. And we leave you this week with another look at that Landry Award winner, Jonathan Gray, his eight touchdown performance on state championship weekend for the Alito Bearcats. Have a great, safe, happy holiday.